How's it going guys? I'm Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified veterinary neurologist and neurosurgeon. And on today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about one of the most common and sometimes devastating diseases that we face as not just neurologists, but as veterinarians. And that is disc disease or intervertebral disc herniations. Specifically, I'm going to go over three common symptoms that dogs show when they have a disc herniation so that you can recognize what this looks like should it happen to your pet. It's so important to recognize these symptoms of a disc herniation simply because the prognosis and recovering from a disc herniation can oftentimes be time dependent. In other words, the sooner a pet is evaluated, the better off they often are. Quick disclaimer though, none of these symptoms themselves are unique to disc herniations. These symptoms simply represent problems with the spine in general. And so other differentials, say like things like infections or tumors, meningitis, stuff like that, can very often mimic these clinical signs and be impossible to tell definitively from a disc herniation. So we'll get right to it, but before I go any further, if you don't mind, please hitting the like and subscribe button. I'm trying to get this information out to as many people as I possibly can, and doing that really helps with the algorithm. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first symptom I want to talk about from disc herniation is pain, specifically spinal pain. That's pain that originates from either the neck or the middle back or the lower back, what we call the thoracic or the lumbar spine. See, when a disc herniates, it causes both a bruise to the spinal cord, kind of like a concussion, but it also causes physical compression, like the spinal cord is being pressed on by the herniated disc material. So this in turn creates anywhere between very mild pain to very severe pain, depending on where the disc exactly is and what specific structures of the spine and spinal cord the disc has herniated into. For instance, if a nerve root is involved, that's oftentimes much more painful compared to if no nerve roots are involved at all. But there's a huge spectrum as far as how painful a disc herniation can be in dogs, and some dogs don't even show you that much pain. Dogs can show spinal pain in a number of different ways and in varying degrees. And to even confuse the matter further, different breeds can show pain in different ways and be more stoic than others. For instance, a beagle will vocalize and scream uh, very loudly if even a little bit of pain is experienced. Whereas other breeds like say French Bulldogs or Pit Bulls can oftentimes not really show you anything, uh, barely even any response, even if they're in severe pain. So it can be really hard to tell. So how can you, the owner, recognize when your dog may be having a disc herniation and thus need to get concerned? Well, the first step is just to be able to recognize how much pain your dog is in just in general. A great tool to help you do that is what's called the Colorado State University or CSU pain scale. This is a zero to four scale that Colorado State University has come up with that's been tested and is very commonly used in vet hospitals across the country. And it provides a nice objective way to assess a dog or cat or any animal for their level of discomfort, ranging from zero being totally comfortable to four being in severe pain. And it illustrates and describes very common behaviors and sort of postures that animals will take to help tell you how much comfort or not they're in. The scale is freely available online. You can literally just Google it. And like I said, almost every vet clinic across the country uses this scale as part of their daily physical exams on any pet in the hospital. Now, specifically to spinal pain, here are some things to look for. Oftentimes when dogs have spinal pain, they will assume what is called a kyphotic posture. And this involves hunching their back and kind of holding their head down, as you see in this picture right here. This kyphotic posture can result from any problem either in the neck, the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, literally anywhere in the spine where there's a painful area, they can assume this posture. Another symptom of spinal pain, specifically neck pain, can be a dog's refusal to move their head and neck. What you'll often see is they'll kind of be stuck in place and not want to move. And instead of moving their head and neck to look at you or look at objects around them, they'll kind of just look with their eyes or they'll have their head kind of stuck down and look up in a really kind of sad way like that. Um, but that is a sign, if they don't want to move their head and neck, that means that area hurts. And so that can be a real indicator that something is bothering them kind of in this region. It's also common for dogs to hold a limb off the ground and display what's called a root signature when they have an issue affecting either their spinal cord or the nerves that pop out of their spinal cord. For instance, if a dog has a lateralized disc herniation that compresses a spinal nerve in their neck, let's say it's on their right side, this is my right side, oftentimes what you'll see is a dog will kind of hold their leg off the ground 
and kind of take weight off of it. We don't know exactly why they do that. We think it's somehow relieving pressure off that nerve or spinal cord area when their disc is herniated. But oftentimes this can mimic lameness and people will think that their foot is injured or they have a uh, some sort of like a penetrating injury to their paw pad, something like that. That's not the case, they actually have a spinal injury. So look for something like that too if a dog's kind of holding their leg off the ground and displaying some neck guarding and kind of fixed posture that can maybe clue you in that it's a spinal cord issue rather than say like a paw issue. Another sign of spinal pain in dogs is what we call muscle fasciculation. So when you feel their neck, Sometimes you can even see this. You can see their muscles kind of firing and you'll see their head kind of bob like this. You, their ears will pin back, their head will kind of jerk, and you'll see the muscles in their neck kind of fasciculate. You can even feel this. If you touch their neck, if they allow you to do it, you can feel the muscle bellies firing and twitching. Um, this occurs in the lower back as well, the rest of the spine, the thoracic and lumbar spine, but it's not nearly as appreciable. It's, it's a little bit harder to notice uh, compared to the neck, but nonetheless, this is something that can definitely clue you in as to spinal pain being present. And it's very common for the stoic breeds, like I mentioned, French Bulldogs and Pit Bulls, to have this as the only thing that they show you that indicates pain. They don't vocalize, they don't act any different. All they do is just sit there and fasciculate with their muscles and act tense and that's it. So that's all you have to work with. Here's a good video I've used in a previous video where I talked about a Frenchie who I did uh, neck surgery on. But you can see here in the video, this dog is displaying very subtle signs of pain, but they're, they're definitely there. And when you look closely, it's actually pretty severe pain, I thought. But in the video, you can see this Frenchie's ears will pin back and his head will kind of jerk down. That's a result of his muscles fasciculating or kind of like tingling or contracting. Other behaviors that dogs can exhibit when they're in pain is they can be lethargic, they don't want to move, they don't want to get out of their crate, they can walk with an appearance that they're kind of walking on eggshells, they can kind of just take this like real subtle ginger sort of walk in one or more limbs. So those are other things to look for too that may clue you in. So moving on to symptom number two, and this is ataxia. Now this is not specific only to disc herniations, nor is this specific even to spinal cord injury. Ataxia basically means incoordination. So if you see your dog suddenly developing an incoordinated gait, like what you see here, combined with any evidence of spinal pain like I already mentioned, that can clue you in. Specifically, if you have a dog like a Dachshund, a French Bulldog, a Beagle, or any other breed that's either known to be predisposed to disc herniations, or if your dog has tested positive for a chondrodysplasia genotype, if you know that going in and your dog suddenly develops an incoordinated gait, that is a red flag that your dog may be suffering from a disc herniation and needs to be looked at as soon as possible. This incoordinated gait or ataxia occurs because of the spinal cord being injured by the disc herniating. Again. Remember, like I mentioned earlier, a disc herniates, it causes a bruise and ongoing compression of the spinal cord. So these two injuries together result in altered signals trying to get from the legs up to the brain to tell a dog's brain where their limbs are. So if it doesn't know exactly where their limbs are, it will take these kind of odd, kind of overreaching steps, kind of put their legs in all different sorts of positions rather than a nice, tight, normal gait. It's not dissimilar from when people who are drunk are taking the field sobriety test and they can't walk in a straight line. It's, it's actually quite similar to that. And bear in mind, this can happen in one, two, three, or all four legs, depending on where the injury is. And it's as simple as if the back legs are ataxic, then you're probably dealing with a back issue, whereas if all four legs are ataxic, you're probably dealing with a neck issue. Not always, but probably. So we've covered pain, we've covered ataxia. Our third symptom that I want you to be aware of is essentially the worst version of ataxia, and that is paralysis. If your dog suddenly becomes paralyzed in one or more limbs, a disc herniation is almost always going to be on the differential list and probably near the top of the differential list, depending on their breed, their history, how fast it happened, all that sort of stuff. And again, this occurs because the spinal cord is getting bruised and compressed. But now, because the injury is so bad, it's involved more of a cross-sectional area of the spinal cord, there's deeper injury to the spinal cord involved, and this starts to claim the actual tracks in the spinal cord that initiate motor movements. It just basically means the spinal cord injury is very severe. So if you see this in your dog, you need to take your dog or cat to the vet as soon as possible. If your vet's not open and it's after hours or a holiday, you need to see an emergency clinic like a 24 seven facility, ideally one with MRI neurologists or surgeons on staff that can take care of this problem and get it looked at as soon as possible. 
The reason this is such an urgency is because dog's recovery from a disc herniation is very oftentimes time dependent. And I'll explain what I mean. If we're talking just a few hours from the initial injury, then it's probably not a huge deal. But if we're talking about more than about, mm, let's say a day, getting into a couple of days to a few days, then the prognosis for your dog recovering from that injury, from a disc, again, assuming a disc herniation, is going to potentially change. We don't know why this happens in some dogs and not in others, but if you don't address a disc herniation in a timely manner, some small subset of dogs will continue to have an injury that kind of cascades through their spinal cord, resulting in a condition called myelomalacia. And this basically literally translates to spinal cord liquefying or liquefying necrosis of the spinal cord. This is a complication of spinal cord injury that fortunately is quite rare, but is absolutely devastating when you see it. And it can happen even up to seven days after the initial injury. We think French Bulldogs are a breed that is more predisposed to this condition. That's been my clinical experience, and I know my colleagues basically feel the same way. There's even some data that's come out that shows that French Bulldogs have a higher chance of developing this fatal condition after a disc herniation compared to other breeds. So again, I cannot reiterate this enough. This just speaks to the importance of seeing a veterinarian as soon as possible if your pet experiences paralysis or close to it. If your pet suddenly is unable to walk and you're not seeing them move their limbs much, that is an emergency and they need to be evaluated right away. I'll leave you with that for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Please, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know what I can do better. Greatly appreciated. Thank you very much.